Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of an email server video series in which I'm demonstrating how you can set up an email server on your Raspberry Pi for free through your home router. Very briefly, I would very much appreciate any support you can offer. On the screen is my Patreon account. If you're interested in accessing videos that aren't available on YouTube, if you'd like one-to-one -one support because you're stuck, uh, or if you'd like to suggest content or would just like to support me, please do visit my Patreon account. It would be very much appreciated. And I'd also like to say a very big thank you to my existing patrons. Um, if it wasn't for your contributions, I don't think I would have managed to carry on and complete this series. So thank you very much. So here we are at the end of our journey, finally. In this fifth and final stage, we'll be setting up something called a DMARC record. That's D-M-A-R-C record on our DNS server. I'll explain what this is in just a minute, but for the sake of satisfaction, I'm going to tick off our final objective on this slide to complete the set. There we go. Now, for me, that's incredibly satisfying and I'm hoping it is for you. We're finally reaching the end and we can safely say by the end of this video, we've ticked off every point we needed to to get our email server up and running as it needs to be. OK, stage five, DMARC. So DMARC is a reporting protocol for email authentication. It stands for Domain-Based Message Authentication, Reporting and Conformance. DMARC uses the sender policy framework, which I've included here on the slide, and Domain Keys Identified Mail, DKIM, which I've also included on the slide as reminders, to check the email's authentication. So two of these components we have already set up for postfix in previous videos. Domain-based message authentication reporting and conformance, however, we haven't yet done. So that's what we're going to do here in this video. How you set up a DMARC record on your DNS server is actually somewhat dependent on your personal preference towards security. Here in this video, I will show you the configuration that I use, which will get us to our final destination. But if you're interested, Google DMARC and have a look at how a record can be generated. Okay, so to add a DMARC record, we need to head over to our DNS server, which in my case, and likely yours, is Cloudflare. So open up Cloudflare in a browser and navigate to your DNS settings. I'm going to do that off screen now. To drag it over. There we go. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to create a new text record. So there's a button here for adding record. We've used it many times before. If I click the add record button, it'll open up this dialog here, this section here, and I'll use this to select a text record. So type equals text. Okay, and then in the name, you need to type the following, underscore D-M-A-R-C, <coughs> excuse me, underscore D-M-A-R-C dot, and then you need to have your domain name. So I'll just move the cursor. So for me, that's going to be single hyphen entity.com. Of course, for you, this part of the name for this text record will be different. It'll be your domain name. OK, so make sure that is set correctly. You can leave TTL to auto. Now, the content of this box needs to look as follows. So type as I type. V equals DMARC, so D-M-A-R-C 1 then a semicolon, space, p equals none, semicolon, space, and then rua equals mail to, colon. Okay, I'll just pause there. So v equals dmark1, all in capitals, then a semicolon, followed by a space, and then p equals none followed by a semicolon and then a space, and then RUA equals mail to, all one word, and then a colon. And now you're going to type in an email address. Now this email address just needs to be one that you own, ideally one pointing to your, um, pointing to your domain. So the one I'm going to use is pi at single-entity.com because pi at single-entity.com I know exists. At the end of your email address, type in a semicolon again, and then a space, 
and then type in RUF. Instead of RUA, we're typing in RUF equals mail to one word again, followed by a colon, followed by your email address. Again, you can have a different email address, but I'm going to use the same one, pi at single hyphen entity dot com. OK, when you've typed in your um, email address, end it with a semicolon again, have a space and then type in F O equals one and then end it with a semicolon. OK, that's the complete command that we need. Now, the two email addresses are to receive security reports. So what I tend to do is I have a common email account to receive these reports. And a good one to use is the user Pi, particularly as this course is focused on there being a user Pi. This is a good user account to use. So if you use your, if you type this in, sorry, and use your email account um, Pi at followed by your domain, you should be fairly safe. And I recommend at least to start with, uh, you follow that course. Okay. Right. With this done then, let me click the save button to make sure it's locked in. There we go. So that's our DMARC record that we've just created. So now we just need to test uh, that this has worked. So let's head over to mailtester.com one more time and check that it gives us 10 out of 10 and that the DMARC record section will be green without any warning messages. So to do that, firstly, open up your email client, the one of your choice. In my case, I'm opening up Thunderbird now off screen and I actually have a uh, email ready to go, which is just here. So um, I'm actually sending it from info at single-entity.com in this case. This is just another user I created, but yours will be pi at your domain. So I'm sending it from this account and I'm sending it to mailtester.com. This is the link that's presented to me on the website. And I've just created lost cat as a subject and then a very standard bit of fun email and I'll click send. Okay, great. So the next thing I need to do is open up Mail Tester, which I also have off screen here. Bring it over and click check my score. You can see interestingly down here all of the previous tests I've done during the making of this video series and the ones I did yesterday uh, to prepare for this video to check everything was working. Okay, and there we go. So we have still achieved 10 out of 10, which is great. Um, but the important part for us is the DMARC record section, because previously, for those who had noticed, this box here had a yellow tick next to it. Even though we had 10 out of 10, it wasn't fully authenticated, and it did actually say that here. But now it says you're properly authenticated, which is great. So if I expand this section, you'll see that your message has passed the DMARC test. That's now green. So that's another thing we've done. Right, so I recommend with this done, you now go to your preferred email client, such as Thunderbird, and send an email to a third party email provider, such as Gmail, Yahoo, Outlook, whatever you like, and see if your emails end up in the inbox and not the spam box. I would very much expect they will for finally end up in the inbox and not the spam box, but there is a small chance they still might not. So one thing that might have happened is that during your email setup, for some reason, if you were playing with things and doing lots of tests, you may have become blacklisted on a couple of blacklisting sites. Um, you can find out if you've been blacklisted in a number of ways. The first way to do that is to have a look in Mail Tester and to see if any of the uh, common sites they check have been blacklisted. If any of these are not green, you'll need to visit the appropriate website and get yourself unblacklisted. And that's completely fine, that can be done. Um, they'll just recheck the website, meets the standards, and then you'll be sorted out. Um, there are other ways of checking if your email is blacklisted, but I'm only going to cover this one here. But there are other websites you can use to test that your emails meet the standards required, and they can have much more comprehensive lists than this for blacklisting. So it's worth checking those out if you're finding your emails aren't ending up in your users inbox and I'll still edit ending up in their spam box. Okay, I'm going to end this video series on this lovely screen because it's such a pleasant thing to see. 
and say congratulations and I very much hope that you've got this far. If you have, I'd love to see a comment on, on YouTube. I've not asked for that before, but it'd be very nice if you could just let me know if it's worked for you. Uh, it should have done. Uh, hopefully your emails are now safely going to the inbox of your recipients. You have a stable, working, mostly spam protected email server and you should be good to go. A few things that I've not covered, which I intend to cover in future videos, is how to host multiple uh, uh, domains. So that means multiple websites as well as multiple email accounts. Both can be done, uh, obviously, so that would then make you a fully host, fully fledged hosting platform, basically, if you can do that. Um, and I'll be showing how to do that in a later video. But for this series, I have finished. Thank you very much. I would very much appreciate if you could support my work through Patreon. If you found this useful and you've got a working email server, um, if you'd like to make a contribution, I'd appreciate that. You don't have to, but it would be lovely. And I'll continue with my video series, um, not this one, but another one in the very near future. So thank you very much, and I will see you then.